Good morning, everyone. It's time for a turtle cast. And I have my tea. I have my Yorkshire tea in here. I hope you have your tea or coffee, unless it's night. Unless it's night for you, don't drink coffee at night. It can kill you not sleeping at all. And unless, again, unless you plan to farm experience like crazy, as there is already double experience up, then yeah, I do plan to farm some experience later today, but first it's time for a turtle cast. Let me see who's already in the chat. Uh, let me check. Oh, I see we have uh, some people. We have Femos, Nico, Paul Keck, Ricardos40, Mike Litoris, L Infantry, Crispy Taco Boy, Michael Yost, Brosan, uh, G, uh, G, 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 I don't know how it's supposed to be, something like that, so totally different. Uh, Tomek Player 1, Misiowicz, Samik Mojo, The Hotness Mac, Awesome, Prub, Gomu56, Nerd in Paradise, uh, Many Flores, Pete Bardic, Greg Hall, Clavis Clitoris, and that's it for now. Welcome everyone, and happy to have you in the chat. And uh, there is QuakeCon, I think there was QuakeCon going on like yesterday. Then if I'm not mistaken, there is something that Bethesda posted about Fallout as well. Then we'll check that, we'll check inside the vault. And uh, first we'll check your questions under Ask a Turtle on our Discord. If you don't know where the Discord is, it's, the link is always in every description to every video and the live stream. Then you just click on it and join the Discord. Then you need to choose your platform and stuff like that and you're good. You're good to go. Then I think that's simple. Let me find my Discord and we'll jump into it. Discord. Discord is launching and of course what's new? Thank you, Discord. There are lots of new stuff, but I don't actually need new stuff. I need existing stuff to work. That's it. All right. As the turtle section. Today is 20. Then I think we start. Yeah. Uh, okay. The old ones were, were removed by moderators. Then thank you. <laughs> thank you for your hard work, guys. Then I have only new ones. I just need to swap the view for my screen capture and you should be able to see Ask the Turtle section. And after Ask the Turtle section, I will go back to YouTube chat to see what if you have any questions in YouTube chat. But anyway, first, Ask the Turtle section. Mr. Red Murder is first. Hey everyone, was wondering why would one go for a short barrel versus a long barrel on a weapon mod? Uh, answer is recoil. Short barrel offers much lower recoil. If you shoot enemies close range anyway, there is no really reason to have a long barrel. It's a good idea if you are trying to use, for example, railway rifle without VATS. If you want to use railway rifle without VATS, the only option really to be able to control recoil at all is a short barrel. Next is Sir Tech Walter. I know you have tested aristocrats compared to junkies, compared to bloodied, etc. Indeed, you are the king of testing and your world is indeed the end of the discussion. LOL. Question. I'm looking for a comparison between aristocrats and junkies with and without addictions. Not sure if that has specifically been compared. My guess is an aristocrat fixer will do more damage with no addictions than junkie fixer with addictions. But since I'm not a turtle, I don't know for sure. And there is answer from Lars. Let's see if this will be correct. Aristocrats and junkies have the same amount of bonus damage. So an aristocrat fixer without addictions will do the same as a junkie fixer with addictions. So there really is no way of using junkies over an aristocrat one, since there is no penalty for damage when using aristocrats. Yeah, that's that's exactly the answer. Aristocrats gives you 50% if you have caps, and junkies give you 50% if you have addictions. Then that's just a different way of achieving the same bonus. That's the difference between those two. 
And, oh, that's a good reply. Using junkie without addiction is like using aristocrats and have zero caps. Or blood it and have full HP. You just don't want it. That's a good answer from Peppa Shaker, Pig, uh, She, He, They, Them. I don't know. Uh, there is a picture of a pig nose, full pig and pig head. Whatever we should read in here. I mean, you can just compare full power aristocrat versus no addictions junkie because addictions is where the power of junkie lie. You get to use 0, 28, I think it's 29 caps. 29 caps for full bonus, over 29 caps. And Spadgan Rich is saying, it seems to me that the balance between legendary cores and modules is way out. My cores outbalance my modules fourfold. Do you have a good method for farming script to buy more modules or what to do with surplus cores, please? The good method is to use more than one character. That's the only good method. If you want to craft something that's tradable, it's good idea to play on two characters. Therefore, you can script stuff on both characters and you will have cores on both characters as well because you cannot transfer cores. Then you need to have cores farm on both and that's the only problem if you don't want to play on two characters then really there is not much you can do quad bash malkavman dude i have 1200 cores and currently 22 modules the balance is mongers <laughs> yeah modules are hard to get cores are easy because cores are not limited that's the secret if you play only a little bit daily and you have a lot of script material, then you will have more modules than cores. But if you play a little bit more, then cores will accumulate, modules will not. And Red, <coughs> excuse me, Ranger Radio is saying, I watched the anti armor vid, but I'm still having a bit of trouble understanding. Okay, let me try to help if I can. I have one. Have any of the updates fixed the armor pen, Max, or is this just an issue with more miners? I have heard more miners are wonky. I wonder if it has to do with the black titanium. Uh, about armor penetration. Armor penetration is currently working on everything, according to my knowledge. The damage numbers can be broken, not always reflect any change, but yes, armor penetration currently is working on everything. At least I didn't find any exceptions. It is working. Two, is perforating the same percentage as stinging swift? No, a swift does not have any armor penetration at all. Stinging is 20%, perforating is 40%. Then definitely there is a huge difference. Number three, I've heard both bows and railway rifles have secret armor pen effects. Is it true? Uh, I heard it as well. Never tested it, then I cannot confirm or deny. Uh, number four, bonus rant, idea for content testing. I found the cloaking on a hit legendary to be very underrated. I'm curious in a high rate of fire weapons that can be silenced could potentially become sneak crit weapons if the rate of fire is high enough to proc the stealth field and keep you hidden. Heavy gun stuff like that. I've managed to stay hidden in excavation with a cloaking fixer quite well, and it seems like the effect works significantly better than escape artist. Okay, I didn't notice on my loud heavy guns, but I never tried with fixer and power armor. It may work better with a stealth boy active or in the stealth suit. I'm not sure if it's stuck if you already have full stealth field, but can be tested. Add to the fact that follow through and taking one for the team could be continuously activated due to being found and hidden again. <laughs> this could be meta. Power armor users could also hotkey stealth boy chests and put work in with something like a cloaking faster fire at minigun or what have you. I have yet to test if cloaking also works with explosive two shot or far flank fireworks. Okay. That's that's a good idea. I, I don't currently have enough time to test all of that. It's double experience weekend, it's midweek. But for further future, maybe? I'm not saying no. I'm not saying yes, because I don't know when I will have time to play around with this very unique effect. Rogue Baton 78728. 
Did not expect this to happen, dear Mr. T. I just got the Peppa Shaker plan. Immedi immediately went to the weapons workbench, used the super duper card and put in make 10. I got 14. Did you know that could happen? <laughs> yeah, that can happen. Super duper can trigger many times. Awesome. I'm happy that you had good luck. Super duper works with everything but the stuff that you craft is legendary. Yeah, almost true. Doesn't work with alcohols. But yes, that's generally the rule. Oh yeah, Brian is answering as well. <laughs> it works with named weapons too, like the Unstoppable Monster and such. Technically not legendary, but still nice. If I buy another camp slot, will all my current future characters get extra slot or just one? All of them. Don't buy, it's not worth it. It's worth it if someone want it. How it can be not worth it? It depends what you need. You cannot say for someone what's worth it. It's like saying carry weight is not worth it. Or damage is not worth it. Like, depend what your goal is. But yes, the answer is yes. It works on all your characters on the account. All five of them. Five of the cap. Perlay. Did Angry Turtle ever get his Peppa Shaker plan? Yes, I did. Good people delivered to me. I have more than one now. I will keep them for a while and then probably do some giveaway like in a, in six months or so when people will be looking for it and it will be far away from midweek. Gladonus Gear. Do you think we have a chance of us getting the auto axe when the pit comes? Looking forward to slaying some trucks and wild men. Maybe that's a definitely good idea. It can be a cool weapon, I just hope. But as that don't forget keyword that it's a melee weapon and do not put it just as an item without keywords like for example chainsaw is that doesn't work with any perks because there is no keywords. Did the grenadier perk card get fixed yet? No September patch, yes. Mr. Tartur, is there a bug that removes empath? I've used the serum about four different times now and after a while I noticed that it's not on the mutation list anymore. Uh, I don't know about any bug removing it. Are you on the team while checking that? But it should always show. Do you have the perks equipped to keep the mutations? Do you have everything? I, I never had a problem with that. My empath is there, always. Why Backwoodsman 6 magazine not affecting Tasty Squirrels too? Because <laughs> it's a bug, yeah. <laughs> Answer for bug test. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a bug. Unfortunately, no one knows why it's there, but it is. Net in Paradise. Bro, many thanks for your turtle tank built with the shredder. It has served me well and I love it. One question. How do we stop the superhero landing in power armor? I thought bare bones did it, but I'm still landing really hard on even the smallest of jumps in my excavator, thanks. On small jumps? It shouldn't be a landing on small jumps. Only if you jump higher. It shouldn't be a superhero landing in small jumps, but if you jump a little bit higher, then only way like to avoid it is like hiding your weapon or doing tricks like that just before the landing. There is no way to just switch it off. And don't forget strange in numbers. Make sure you are on a team with strange in numbers equipped to uh, strengthen this bad bones per, uh, mutation a little bit. It should work fine. At least for me, it does work for normal marsupial jumps. Unless you jump higher than that, then there is no way to avoid superhero landing. And yeah, okay. Back to YouTube chat. Back to YouTube chat. Back to you guys. Uh, okay, let's scroll up a little bit check out what was going on when I was in Asketarpul section. We out here looking for potato salad. Yeah, that's a hard one to get, the most important one actually. Even more important than pepper shaker plan. And hello whoever was joining when I was not looking. 
Oh, you was lucky, Mohit. You rolled two pepper shakers, one vampire, one bloodied. That's incredibly good luck. Congratulations. Any camp building tips? Uh, nope. Don't forget. Oh, I have one. Don't forget to place workbenches. They're useful. Mm. And some people sending me hearts. Okay, I don't know what this means exactly, but thank you. It's yeah, I know that for some of you it's night, and good evening for those of you that have night now. <laughs> but here it's morning. In case anyone else is curious, I have Vampire Bloody Stealth Grinder Mini. No, it won't keep you hidden. Even the spinning without ammo is too loud. Yeah, that would, that's my experience with heavy guns as well. You cannot stay hidden with them. Even if you are invisible, it doesn't matter because it's loud. Most people think they should be explosive effect on a pepper shaker and Bethesda Dev strongly disagree. You need more kitchen building items. Why not? Good morning, astronomical unit. And more people have pepper shaker. I think at this moment there is quite a lot of people with pepper shaker. It's no longer day one. Yeah, if, if you still need Pepper Shaker plan, try checking player vendors. Some players are selling them already, then you have a chance. If you cannot get from event, try to buy it. If you craft ammo weapon one by one, the super duper perk triggers more than bulk crafting. No, it's not true. It triggers the same for bulk crafting unless there is some bug I don't know about. But for sure it triggers for ammo and weapon crafting. Can you have my boss banner? No, you can't. I'm using it. When does midweek end? I think it's, it's Monday afternoon, but I'm not 100%. Check last week inside the vault. There were dates. Pepper Shaker is really cool gun. That those are my thoughts. Tato salad is the best recipe for herbivores if you want to be tanky. Uh, one gun army and enforcer. You you really don't need both. If you equip just enforcer, you will cripple them incredibly fast anyway. I mean, I am not stopping you, I'm just telling you, it's almost the same. Yeah, I know you can transfer, that's why I said use two characters if you want to craft item that's tradable. Let's say, for example, you are going after uh, Excavator Legendary Power Armor, then you can craft those legendary pieces on both characters, and if you get a good piece on second character, then transfer this piece to the first one. Then you basically have twice as many crafts as you craft with two, although it only works if you craft tradable stuff. Good morning, everyone just joining. Yes, Carl, a lot of people already have pepper shakers. Yeah, Gram is Mia. Gram is Mia. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Never happened before. Don't know why. Yeah, 
Yeah, for crippling it's definitely the best. That's the only shotgun that can fire so fast. And yeah, I heard about it that Graham is somewhere around, but just not close. Not so close as he should be. Okay, we'll probably be able to find it. What's next? Uh, inside the vault. Checking inside the vault now. Let's jump into follow.net. I mean follow.com. And let's see. Where is inside the vault? Quakecon, Mikwik, and more. That's the one. Okay. Let's make it bigger. Full screen. And swap the camera. All right. Followed 76 inside the vault. Quakecon, Mikwik, and more. That's the title. QuakeCon 2021 is taking place this weekend and we are sharing a rundown on all of the Fallout 76 streams and content that you can catch during the show, in case you've missed it so far, we've also got reminders for you about the ongoing midweek seasonal event as well as details on how you can get double experience for the next few days. Or you can check my video for even better details how to get 10 times more experience. Join us for QuakeCon 2021. And that's a camp built on top of the world. It's, it's time once again to join together for QuakeCon 2021, which begins just a little later today. Tune in to catch free action-packed days filled with developer panels covering many of our titles, awesome community content, giveaways and more. Of course, We'll have plenty of Fallout 76 streams to go around, and we feel there is something for everyone this weekend. During the event, we'll take a deep dive into our upcoming Fallout Words update with Design Director Mark Tucker and Fallout Words lead, lead uh, Bo Buchanan. I will check later who it is, how to pronounce it. Uh, you can also learn how to take your characters to the next level with our endgame guide. Join a special guest adventures in Appalachia or even pick up a few camp building tips. Check below for the full lineup of Fallout 76 streams taking place over the next three days. And there is scheduled Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, making Appalachia own Fallout Worlds. 11 p.m. Eastern Time, Fallout 76 End Game Guide. Then we have Thursday, 12.30 a.m. Eastern Time, playing Fallout 76 with UFC Middleweight Rob Whittaker. 9.30 a.m. UK Fallout 76 Team, team Build a Ton. And... Saturday, August 21st, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Fallout 76, Camp, Love It or Nuke It. There's a lot of camp building stuff I see with that. Curious what the end game guide is about. It was already. We'll see if there is anything on YouTube. Watch live. Get a front row seat for all of the action this weekend by heading to Twitch. TV Bethesda. You can also find additional details about each QuakeCon segment, including the full schedule and panel descriptions at www.quakecon.org. Okay, the next dot is dot for the end of the sentence, not dot for the address. So it can be a little bit confusing, but I think there is... No, there is no space, but this dot, this dot is not part of the address. It's midweek. The smokers smoking, the spits are turning, and it's time to feast. If you haven't had a chance to dive into Graham's midweek festivities just yet, don't worry. There are still plenty of prime beast on the prowl for you to take down, and Graham is planning to keep his grill nice and hot until Monday. In case you've never joined us for midweek before, we posted an overview of how this two-part repeatable seasonal event works in this article last week. We know how it works. 
Be sure to complete lots of primal cuts and Gram's meat cook event so that you can earn as much legendary script and as many teamed rewards as you can over the weekend. You cannot really earn too much script from that, but a little bit. Don't forget, we've also added some bonus midweek team challenges to line up so that you can rake in some extra score while the event is live. Midweek seasonal event and bonus challenges, August 17th to 23rd, oh, and there are dates starting and ending both at 4 p.m. GMT. 23rd, and that's Monday, or? Uh, what's the day today? It's 20. And, and we have Friday. That's Monday. I just quickly counted on my fingers. That's Monday. Primal Cats, Graham Smith Cook. Level up this weekend with double experience. Beef up your personal midweek celebration by earning twice the usual experience in Appalachia this weekend. Whether you're playing the drums at Midcook, hunting down legendary creatures, working on improving your daily ops completion times, or anything else, you'll receive double experience and level up twice as fast over the next few days. Here are the dates and times, and it's ending with Midweek, exactly Monday, 6 p.m. GMT or 12 p.m. Eastern Time. Whether you're planning to join us for QuakeCon, head into the Wasteland for some extra experience, meet up with other dwellers for midweek or all three, it's definitely going to be an exciting weekend in Appalachia. See you in game! I will definitely see you in game, although I don't know if developers are in game or on QuakeCon. Need to figure that out. Okay, let me swap the camera for a moment and I will see if there is anything going on the YouTube in regards to developers talk and stuff like that. I know they were posting something. There was something about Fallout. I even watched a little bit of it. Um, Doom Eternal. Oh, there is something. Skyrim, Doom Eternal. Elder Scrolls, Elder Scrolls Online. Oh, making Appalachia your own. That's Bethesda Softworks. That's 20 minute video. I think that's the only one that they publish. We can check it out in a second. I think we'll be able to check it out in a second. First, back to the chat. Back to the chat, then we check video from Bethesda. Oh, it took you 15 tries, Jonathan, to get the weapon plan, pepper shaker plan. That can take some time. Other people get it at first try and not everyone get, was so lucky. Oh, Vampire 25 Nighty Pepper Shaker as a first roll? Why everyone have better luck than me, or is it just illusion? Charlie is a girl, Charlie gives milk. She's both. Every Brahmin is both. I told you guys, it's always both. Gram is out and about wandering around. Maybe. I didn't find him yet, but maybe he's there somewhere in the forest. Flamer that shoots toxic goo? That would be quite a good, cool idea. You got the dark decoy plan first time. That's good plan. I have one too. No worries, John Edwards. Have a good night. Both last last name is pronounced Buchanan, Buchanan, something like that. Okay. Mm. 
Is there anything worth getting from the Gram event? Oh, depend what you need. There, there is some stuff. But I, I need weapon. Other stuff I think is for camp. I'm not sure if there is some new outfit or not. Okay, let's... Uh, where are my headphones? Oh, they fall down. They charge. Working. Need to figure out the video. Need to check the video. Okay. Let's see. Let's play the video. QuakeCon. Hey there, QuakeCon. It's so great to have you with us for our Fallout 76 panel. I'm Nate Valenta, Senior Community Manager. Can you hear him? He seems uh, quite quiet. What's the volume level? Manager for Fallout 76. And I'm Devin McCarthy, Associate Community Manager. Oh no, it should As be fine. As you can tell, we're a little low. separated by distance right now, but that seems <laughs> okay. pretty on brand for Fallout 76. That's right. The beauty of Fallout 76 is that we can explore the waste plant Sorry together, even when we're apart. And that's exactly what we're going to do today as we explore how Fallout 76 continues to evolve. We'll be getting into a ton of details on our new Fallout Worlds initiative, but before we get into that, let's talk about some of the big changes to Fallout 76 in recent years. Joining us today from the development team to share their insights. They have really nice frames for this uh, Zoom meeting. I like it. Like neon frames, everyone. And nice studio over there where Lady Devon is sitting. Yeah, that's cool. They, they did it nicely for this. Insights are Bo Buchanan, our Fallout Worlds lead, Hi. and Mark Tucker, design director. Hi. Hey guys, how you doing? Doing great. Yeah, very excited. Let's kick things off by talking about the Steel Rain update, which landed in July. What did Steel Rain... Oh, sound is too high? Wait a second, maybe I should even reduce it a little bit. Okay, like minus four decibels. Let's see that. Can bring the Fallout 76. Yeah, I'm super excited about this. Steel Rain is a continuation of our Brotherhood of Steel Returns story arc that we started last year with Steel Dawn. So we're continuing that quest line. There's a lot of characters that were introduced in Steel Dawn that you'll continue to get to know and learn about. There's new characters you're gonna meet and have interesting choices and, and dialogue with okay, them. We know everything uh, about in addition Steel Rain. We've also got an expansion to our legendary item system, which is our legendary crafting feature. Okay. Not only do you okay, get guys, to we know craft all of this stuff, items, maybe he's talking to uh, new people. Added legendary new legendary mods as well as expanded it to legendary power armor so a lot of fun stuff there both on the story side and on the gameplay system side of course lots of great stuff in that steel rain update even earlier than that we also released our locked and loadout update which included some major additions to some of our big features in the game like camps special even daily ops mark what can you tell us about what locked and loaded brought to those features we had a huge expansion for our camp system namely camp slots uh, that gives the players the ability to have more than one camp. A lot of our players okay, love I think to they're just giving build. us a recap uh, of so last now update. You can keep building more camps and you can keep expanding uh, with new slots. Uh, on top of that, special loadouts. It uh, gives uh, everybody an opportunity to create new custom loadouts, not only for how they allocate their special, but also the perks that they allocate for their build. So it really is like a completely different opportunity for players to have vastly different character builds. Oh, I just noticed something funny. I, I mean, I don't know, I don't want to have fun of them. But I just noticed that we have like all configuration of the hair. <laughs> Actually, like almost like no facial hair. Huge beard, only a little bit hair <laughs> on the head. And opposite, a lot of hair and smaller beard. <laughs> I, I don't know why I found it. <laughs> I found it just now very interesting. <laughs> Sorry, guys, about this intrusion. Let's carry on. ...on their same character without having to roll a new one. So, yeah, it's super exciting. Uh, with Daily Ops, we added a whole new game mode. Uh, we added new locations. We added new uh, enemy types. It was a pretty big expansion uh, for our Daily Ops system. And... The game mode we added you definitely need really, to change the build. Uh, plays quite a bit. He wasn't able to kill a communist. That's not good. More on stealth gameplay uh, and you know, kind of 
uh, divide and conquer uh, versus trying to stick together and capture a specific location. So really different. We've gotten great feedback from our fans and we're excited to continue building on it. So Fallout 76 is a living game, and on top of all the content updates that we're doing, the team is constantly pushing out quality of life improvements as well. What are some of the biggest changes that you've made over the past year? We've made quite a few, and we're really uh, dedicated to continuing in that path. We added a new tab in the inventory, so you can easily find the new items you've got. Okay, Kevin, uh, skip the recap. In addition to that, we expanded... Uh, I want to hear about the new stuff, what you have to say. inventory to call out uh, a different... Is there timestamps? No. And, okay, I wanted to uh, skip that, items, but there is no time stamps. Work out, uh, armor and apparel. So, you know, that makes it a lot easier to find the things that are in your inventory. That's true. Uh, I'm actually and, and happy with this, but we have it for quite types. a while now. In addition to that, uh, to improve inventory management, we added weight values uh, to better provide feedback when you have, you know, lots of items in a single stack. How much does that weigh? On the paper map, we added a pop-up widget that shows a lot more information for player vendors. So now you can see oh, yeah, that was uh, awesome, player actually. vendors are selling different legendary item types, plans for different legendary that items. That was one, I like think, that, so it's that was one of the most requested there. features so you ever. you can go to somebody else's camp and find what you're looking for. Sounds like a lot of really great updates to the game. How have players been reacting to the improvements and how does the team decide which improvements to focus on? The quality of life stuff usually generates a lot of positive feedback from our players. Um, and, and really, uh, that's kind of, that's why we do it. Yeah, we you're do right. For our players. And what drives QL the stuff future list that we focus important. on are feedback from our players. So we, we listen to what they're saying, where they might be hitting friction points in the game, or just where they see some problems. And we're keeping track of that. We have, we have a very long list of uh, future quality of life changes that we plan to make. My request was Speaking always, of those players and we want to hear home, more from I'm them. Sure you're back. all eager to get into the heart of this panel, and it's time to talk about what's next for Fallout 76 with Fallout Worlds. Bo, what is Fallout Worlds? Well, people have been seeing it as a kind of feature that we're adding to the game that adds world settings and those kind of things. But really, Fallout Worlds is kind of like a belief and a initiative to try to add the legacy of user customization um, 276, right? Bethesda has a long storied history of allowing users to customize games, make them their own, tell their own story. Uh, and that's something we want to do in 76 as well. Um, but it's an online game, so it takes a little bit more to do that than some of the single player games. So I kind of think of this as kind of the first step to allowing more user customization. And so we're doing that by introducing two new modes. He's Custom using the same trick in Photobot as I am with unlimited camera movements. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so public worlds are kind of our uh, thing for everyone. We really want everyone to be able to experience the ability to have some version of the story being their own. So with public worlds, we take the general framework that we've provided, right? The ability to split out the progression to kind of protect your main character in the live, vibrant game and let us do crazy stuff. Um, so with a public world, we can take some of the customization that we've enabled and we can basically curate it into a type of world that everybody can That's the first person with um, worse aim than me. First. <laughs> uh, it's like adventure with different progression. And we'll rotate these. Right now we're going to do it every a month and we'll see kind of what the community and everyone really feels about that. We might do it faster, we might do it um, slower, but at the moment we're committed to try to keep one of those up at all times. Custom worlds, on the other hand, are for our uh, Fallout First members and their friends. It's where you can take the full customization available and you can decide how you want the story to be told, right? You can go in and change all the different settings, um, change combat, change how workshops work, uh, your camp, um, all those kind of things and really make an experience that you would like to play and that your friends and family can play with you. Custom worlds sound awesome and we're gonna get into them in just a second. But if we could step back to public worlds for a moment, what are some of the themes that you're really excited about uh, that we're going to be bringing to the game in this update? Yeah, so we have a lot of different um, public worlds set up, and we kind of plan to keep adding more and playing with them in the future, depending on what the community wants and what they kind of react to. The only problem with those is that they will, in, in the current setup, they will be less popular than Nuclear Winter. Uh, that's sad because that's a lot of work. But unfortunately, some tweaks are needed to to make sense. At this moment, 
No. This moment it will be very unpopular feature. Unless they do something suddenly. But I don't think so. Maybe later down the line. I'm not as optimistic. It's perfect for me for testing stuff, for Tartus Lab, for for playing the game. No. Um, so for the moment, one of my favorites is actually the Happy Builder one. It allows players in the game to kind of place their camps in more locations throughout the game. Um, it also allows them to be able to place items um, with fewer constraints, right? So if you want to do my personal favorite, which is kind of build a Mario platformer in the game, uh, you can kind of do that now, and you can do it off some of the more interesting areas in the game, right? You can build it on top of a mountain or on top of some of the existing buildings. Um, that's one of my favorites. Do you have two favorite custom world settings? Yeah, even though my favorite world is actually the building one, uh, my favorite custom settings more align with combat. Uh, I actually really like the um, kind of personal proximity spawner. Uh, something we put into the game to kind of give you more pressure as you're playing. Um, we spawn creatures around you as you're playing the game. That way you can kind of keep the pressure up. Uh, it's like your own personal random event kind of popping off as you're playing. I don't the other like one I one. like a lot is we have infinite ammo, uh, which most people find when they're looking at the settings. But if you hit the clicker just one more over, you'll see infinite ammo with no reload. That's actually one of my favorites. Um, I don't like this one either. I like if you need ammo, not the no kind of reload stuff. Fire as fast as you want. So with endless vats and the infinite ammo, no reload, you can just kind of kill everything. It's, it's it's cool for like five minutes. Like in my opinion, like firing nonstop without reloading and killing everything without resistance. It's fun for about five minutes. Great. <laughs> It's a deadly combination. What about you, Mark? Do you have two favorite custom world settings? I like to focus a lot on building as well. And uh, for me, uh, the setting that allows me to build at a lot of the named locations in the world is a lot of fun because now I can take these cool locations and uh, make them my own. That coupled with larger build radius and build height settings allows me to really be truly creative with all of our, our camp assets and just kind of go wild with uh, modifying these these locations. We still have adventure mode and private worlds with this update, but Fallout Worlds is introducing custom worlds and public worlds. What happens when I take my character from, let's say, adventure mode, and I wanna head over into a custom world with my friends? Whenever you play in a Fallout world, um, we try to make it very seamless and easy to deal with. So as soon as you kick play, regardless of how you join, we basically automatically fork your adventure character that you have selected uh, and separate it out. So now you have like your own line of progression associated with that specific world, whether it's a public world, your friend's world, your own world. You can now tell your own story, make your own progress down that line. None of that comes back into the main game, so you don't have to worry about if you damage your character, you do something you regret, or if you're playing with more free settings that we have, it doesn't affect your main character. Um, you can also at any point uh, click a re-import button. Yeah, that's the biggest issue that will make no one really play at all. Whatever you do there, it never ever affects your main character. And one thing that I'm currently missing, maybe they will add it, I don't know, is an option to either give us another character's slot to have fresh start on the custom world with friends, or at least give us an option to reset all the quest lines. Because now, you can only make a copy of your character. If you have five slots taken and all your five characters are at a high level and have a lot of quests done, like in my case, then I can only import one of those five. I cannot start from scratch. Uh, I cannot redo the quest line because there is now op no option like that. Then it's good for me to test stuff, but I cannot do what I would love to do. I would left to set a custom difficulty settings and other small tweaks, get four people together and do the quest when it actually requires cooperation and it's difficult. Then that was my idea how to use it, but currently not an option unless I remove one of my existing characters. That means removing minimum of 200 levels on one of my characters. And basically, 
remove the progress that you have and then re-import it from adventure so you can just kind of pick back off that way if any time you know you go back to your your main adventure character you progress a bunch and you want to start back over and catch back up on your uh, custom world or, or public world you can I do have one other question is how come we decided not to allow progress to go back into adventure mode? Um, are you able to expand on that at all? I know a lot of people are really interested in allowing that to happen. Um, most of it, like I said, is this is a longer term initiative for allowing user customization to come into 76. So we want to start in a more conservative way to make sure that our game is safe for everybody and that you kind of only encounter the content that you want to encounter and you don't kind of jeopardize what's going on. So we wanted to start from the safest place we could, which is it's separate. You can go and play, nothing comes back. Um, and then the future, we can look at trying to tone that down a little bit um, as we have time and you know as people want those kinds of features. How does Fallout Worlds work with Fallout First members and their friends? Fallout Worlds works a lot like the uh, adventure private mode that we've had the entire time. You can play on a uh, custom Fallout World. Uh, it's the same thing. You can set it to be team only or friends only. Um, and you can have up to three slots of those. And at any moment, you can spin them up. You can play on them. Your friends can join you through the social menu. Uh, if you have friends that also have Fallout first, once they have a world link, they have a character basically on one of your worlds, they can go through the play menu and they can spin it up whenever they want. They'll basically have their own version of it. Um, they can play on it. Their friends can join them. More of your friends can join them. Uh, that way you don't have to be around all the time. But it does take Fallout first to enable that. If you don't have Fallout first, as long as somebody you know has Fallout first and a character on the world, you can play with them through the social menu. Being able to spin up one of your... And another problem in here... Uh, there is a cap you have you can have maximum of five clones and one clone is locked to one specific world uh, what means after you join five different worlds uh, either like the public one and four of your friends if you want to join fifth different world you need to remove one of the clones then that's that's quite a hard cap if someone don't have followed first and rely on joining friends Plus, he will have like a different game with every friend. Then it doesn't really, like for me, it's not much point to do that unless you play with just one specific friend and you always play together. At least how I see it. Friends custom worlds without them even being online is one of the coolest parts about this. Uh, <laughs> looking ahead after Fallout Worlds comes out, how are we planning to continue supporting it uh, post-launch? Ideally, we'd like to both improve the private world flows a bit uh, and the custom private world flows a bit, as well as adding more settings uh, in the future. And we do keep a very big eye on our Discord and Reddit and all the things that our community team uh, has uh, of the type of features that our players are looking for. Um, we have a very big backlog of settings already, even internally, of the stuff we'd like to do that we just couldn't get to. How specifically can the community have input on the way that Fallout 76 improves and evolves going forward? Uh, the short answer is talk, talk to Nate. Uh, he gives me all of the suggestions <laughs> for everybody. No, um, like I said, any of our community areas that you can get access to, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, uh, our Discord for uh, 76 and BGS, as well as Reddit, we kind of look at everything. Uh, every avenue we can find for players and we really do read them and pay attention to them everyone's input is appreciated and i don't know why but i usually don't like this type of an answer like we look every everywhere for everything like choose one that you really prefer as usually this question is asked where people want to know where to go specifically to have the highest chance of the feedback being seen. Like we look everywhere and read everything is usually not true when there is hundreds of posts on, hun maybe not hundreds, but on dozen different platforms, then you really physically cannot do it. Uh, and then we try to find the right things for the game as a whole. I, I would also add to that uh, for the players that 
are willing to uh, download and hop into our public test server on PC. Uh, you know, it's great for you guys to hop in and uh, play around with some of the stuff that we have in the works and uh, provide feedback on that um, because we have definitely made changes based on player feedback uh, in our on our PTS Reddit thread and through uh, from our Discord feedback as well, uh, just based off folks hopping in, playing stuff on PTS and, and giving us that feedback uh, before it goes live. That's great to hear. Do you have any fun or interesting stories from the world's development? Well, we've been working on worlds actually for quite a long time. Um, so we have lots of things we have tried uh, that may or may not actually work out. Obviously, as devs, right, we kind of want the same stuff that our players want. So we want things that are cool. We want things that are interesting and not all of them work out very well. Um, so we tried to uh, we tried to scale up the creature size at one point, and I have screenshots and videos of it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it also broke everything having to do with the game. So we weren't able to actually ship that one um, at all. But it was a lot of fun. Hopefully in some time we can, we can try to try that one again. See a giant death claw marching through the screen. Like, it's custom world. What do you mean it's a problem that it broke everything? We expect everything to be broken in custom settings. Give us huge death claws. I don't care how... It's actually... Sometimes it's the most fun when stuff is broken. Give us the ability to enable the broken stuff. We can always switch it off. Like, like It's not like they implement it into the live game. Or call it switch on all broken, all broken stuff on. <laughs> How about you, Mark? Do you have any favorite stories from Worlds development? I'm with Bo. The scaling one was uh, quite memorable, both uh, in terms of scaling things up, but also scaling things way down. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. But yeah, as Bo pointed out, that one was rife with problems. So that one will stay on the dev side for now. But uh, it's been. You know, it's been a long process. There's been a lot of work. I'm really proud of the team and what they've accomplished. And I'm looking forward to getting this out there in players' hands and getting their feedback and seeing where we take it. Well, you know, speaking of feedback, Mark, you mentioned this earlier, but Fallout Worlds is available right now on our public test server. If you own a Bethesda Net copy of the game on PC, you can hop in there, try out uh, Public Worlds. Fallout First members can join Custom Worlds. And hey, you know, if you've made friends with someone who's got Fallout First, you can try out their Custom Worlds as well. So we would love to see you in the PTS with us and sharing your feedback in Discord, on Reddit, everywhere you can. And if you're not in the PTS, don't worry, you'll be able to get your hands on Fallout Worlds very soon with its release on September. Here's the date. 9-8-21. And how long is it? Three weeks? Two weeks? Where's my calendar? How far is it? How far is it? One. Two weeks. Almost. Less than three weeks. Almost three weeks. And it's... It's Wednesday? I think they switched the update time. It, it wasn't Wednesdays before. That's fine. Okay, maybe midweek is safer. Okay, let's carry on. Number eighth, and it'll be on all platforms as well. So aside from Fallout Worlds itself, this update's actually gonna include some improvements for other features in the game as well, like a new season, a daily ops expansion. Mark, can you tell us anything about that? We have our sixth season coming out. It is the Unstoppables versus the Diabolicals, which is this whole new group of supervillains. It also features all of the Unstoppables, so super exciting. It's got a lot of great rewards. One of my personal favorites is a new power armor suit based off of one of the yeah, Diabolicals like this. enemies. I mean, Samurai. not the power armor, the team. So you can imagine what this power I want armor super suit looks like. It's <laughs> super cool. Uh, on top of that, Daily Ops, we're expanding that. We're adding a new enemy uh, encounter group type. We've added three no new locations to the rotation. We've got Wotuga High School, we've got Arctos uh, Pharma Biome Labs, and Uncanny Caverns. On top of that, we're doing a new kind of weekend event with Daily Ops that's gonna feature a more challenging version where we're stacking mutations, so it's double mutations. But with that comes double the reward. So we've got some really fun combinations of mutations. Uh, one of my favorites is a combination of the swift-footed mutation with the active camo mutation. So 
you're wandering around and all of a sudden these enemies just appear out of nowhere right next to you because they're moving so quickly and you can't see them. It like, that's the worst mutation. That's the worst mutation. And he's, he, he's having it backwards. When you will have invisible enemies, swift footed, you will have problem to catch to them. It's not like they will run fast towards me. They will run away. I, I was doing it without the swift footed when they invisible. They run away so fast. And now they will be running away even faster and hard to spot. Problem will be chasing them around the map, not defending yourself from them. That's the issue I see here. Not defending. Chasing. It really does add uh, <laughs> some fun challenge to the mode. Well, that sounds terrifying. And I know some folks in the PTS are already <laughs> trying those out and uh, having a blast with it. There's some new and returning events for players to take part in from Spooky Scorch to Treasure Hunter. We have Trick or Treating coming. Do you guys have a favorite event? Well, I am super excited about the Spooky Scorched Trick or Treating event. Uh, obviously, the Spooky Scorched are going to be wearing a lot of fun costumes. A lot of them you've seen before, but there might be some new ones. Uh, on top of that, though, it's not just going around and killing a bunch of scorched in costumes. It's more about collecting a certain type of... What? Santa event with this different costume? That's the new event? Let me go back a second. What was... What was costumes. It's inside? more about collecting... A... Spooky... That's the same thing. Legendary Scourge, but now with different costumes than Santa Scourge. And, 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 and they will drop candy and... Uh, maybe they will somehow surprise us. It does look like a clone of December event. A certain type of uh, candy. What's new? And it's even looked the same. Allow players to go to other player camps and effectively trick or treat from a special object in in the camp. So, I'm excited about this. We're going to really uh, incentivize players to want to dress up in their own costumes as well. Um, so it's a really different kind of event than we've done before because we're trying to incorporate player camps into the the event, and hopefully players will uh, decorate their. Killing Santa Scourge and visiting camps. I'm missing something or it's not really fun. Maybe it's, it is fun, I'm missing something. Because the fun stuff, sorry for my intrusion here, but just want to explain my line of tough stuffs. Uh, because with Santa Scorch, the fun stuff about Santa Scorch was a dark humor fitting to the Fallout universe. Like normally the Christmas stuff and everything, you, you know, everyone knows there's Christmas lore generally. The, the, the Santa's supposed to bring you the present. And that's it, and it's fun time and everything. And here in Fallout, instead we're chasing them, shooting them and grab the present. And it's like a dark humor version. And it have have some fun component to it, and especially if it's only one, this type of event. But now we have second one, that Scorch uh, wearing costumes of a monster, and you shoot a monster and take the loot. That totally, totally lose the sex appeal of the Santa Scorched. Maybe I'm missing something. I will, okay, I will give it fair chance. I will wait until this event will go alive, at least on the PTS to judge it further. It just for whatever reason, I don't know if you agree with me or not, doesn't look very appealing to me. For camps and give them a, a spooky theme along with it. Trick or treating sounds so hype. I'm excited for that. Beyond it that, doesn't. are you able to tell us anything else about what's coming to Fallout 76 this year? Speaking of events, we have more events in the works. We're looking at additional seasonal events later in the year. Uh, super excited about that. One might feature something about uh, the Mothman cultists. The other one might feature something about aliens. Uh, leave it at that. 
And on top of that, we are going to... I just hope it will not be Scorch dressed as, uh, as Muffman and then Scorch dressed as Alien. Hopefully it's not what it's coming. We're going to continue to expand on our legendary item system. So we're going to introduce four-star legendaries into the game. And we're going to give you uh, a lot more agency in terms of how you're crafting, what you're crafting. Um, we got a lot of... Fe oh, that that's interesting. More into the crafting. Will they actually give us something to reduce the RNG? That will be good. If it's something to reduce the RNG element and allow me to actually grind towards my goal instead of rerolling re blindly everything and I have no clue if I go towards my goal or away from my goal because that's the worst feeling. You don't know if you are doing any progress whatsoever. Feedback from the initial crafting system we just put out. Uh, so we've taken that feedback and we're applying it to, to the four star legendary system. So very excited about that. Uh, and of course, there will be a new season after that with a lot of cool rewards. Uh, and we are also focused on adding a lot of new quality of life uh, additions too, to, to address some of the feedback we're getting from our players. That all sounds super exciting and I can't wait to experience that. Thank you guys for taking time to talk with us today, giving us a little bit of insight on Fallout Worlds and what's coming next for Fallout 76. Do you have any parting words for the QuakeCon audience? We're all really excited to get Fallout Worlds in front of people. We really hope it's a way that uh, everyone can kind of find something fun for them to do at the end of the day, um, play the game in new ways, revisit content that they've played before but they want to try something new, whether it's building in weird locations, replaying the game in a harder or easier mode. Um, hopefully everyone can find something that kind of excites them. I appreciate everybody's time today. Uh, you know, really love our community uh, and everybody who plays our game and provides feedback into what we're doing. We can't do this without you, so thank you. And you know, as Bo mentioned, we've got a great uh, release with Worlds, and we've got a lot more content and features and changes coming. So thank you, and I hope you enjoy it. And let us know what you think. And of course, we'd like to thank each and every one of you at home for joining us today during the Fallout 76 panel. As a final reminder before we go, Fallout Worlds will be available in the live game on September 8th. And if you'd like to test it right now, you can join us in the public test server. Until next time, we'll see you in Appalachia. Bye. All right, all right. Bye bye, bye bye. Bye bye. Stop playing. Bye bye. Okay, back to the chat. Back to the chat. Check a little bit more of your of your feedback. But honestly, uh, the most interesting stuff was at the very end about the four star and giving us something to help with customiz customization. Then that's interesting. That's interesting. <laughs> Trick. Yeah, Dirty Paradise saying trick or treating sounds so hard. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, there was nothing really, nothing giving me hype in what they describe. <laughs> Sorry, I would hear in the middle school hallway. <laughs> uh. Look like bragging to the board that they are doing something or to new players to encourage them to play. The problem is if this will be really so similar to Santa event that we have in December, those two are definitely way too close together. Plus we already had couple bonus rounds with Santa Scorched and now another Scorch event just not dressed as a Santa. Yeah, the Mischief Knight was better, blowing up stuff. Alien base boss raid, that would be cool. Yeah, it is supposedly new event. It just doesn't look like. <laughs> I just wake up. Don't worry, they didn't say much. 
Pay the big pay to be excited here. Yeah. The bright note, Samik Mojo has got the ducks. Congratulations. Tell the turtle. I, I just hope it's something hidden there, but all they described is basically Santa Scotch event one more time with different costumes. Plus, you will interact with camp items, probably donate those candies or take candies out one or the other to get some rewards from that. <laughs> Josh is saying, looks great, can't wait for them to just slap on more costumes to other events and say, wow, look at this cool new feature. <laughs> yeah, they, they said already that they unable to fix Mischief Knight. Yeah, we need more bosses. Unfortunately, nothing about bosses in this one. The, the nuclear winter is going out. They just didn't set anything because there was a lot of backslash on, on it. Then they probably figure out better don't say anything. It will disappear and it will be over. Maybe drop chance for the costume scorch wear. Probably. We'll probably get new costumes, but I, I don't even like those costumes. I don't wear scary costumes. Uh, my character either wears something that looks like pre-war or goofy outfits or superhero outfits or cool power armor skins uh, nothing scary. I don't, wa don't like, like scary stuff. Especially that it doesn't look scary, it just look more like uh, for children movies. They can't or won't. They said that they can't fix it. They said that they tried and they can't. All the deaths are builders. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe all the bosses, all the deaths are builders. Uh, when the scoreboard is ending, when the update will drop, then we have less than three weeks to finish it. Then best moment is now, because double XP means that you can farm it faster, and that reminds me that I need to farm my scoreboard, so I have, I have it not finished. I will be farming. Yeah, September 8th, it's, it's the last day. When the update drops, the old scoreboard goes away. Dodge going to the moon. No. No, there is no dodge going in Fallout. All right. Yeah, I think that will conclude this episode of Tartar Cast. We'll see what future will bring us. I'm happy with custom words for my turtle lab and they really give me, they really need to give me an option of fresh start because I want to do extra stream when we can enjoy those custom words with proper difficulty settings without legendary items when everyone will play together and cooperate when missions will be actually challenging when leveling up will matter and stuff like that but for this to work I need to have more settings and fresh start. Then that's the, that's the issue. All right, anyway, everyone, I hope you will have a great day or night and I will see you in game. I will be definitely there around nine o'clock or even before uh, doing the event with Mr. Graham. Maybe I will even meet him with a little bit of luck and farming some experience. When I will be inside West Tech, the, you know, I'm just farming experience. Then I will pop out when they will be like uh, event on the map and back into the West Tech. That's the plan for today. 
Can more players come to custom worlds? No, unfortunately, it's like a private world. Max of eight players. That's another problem. But what can you do? The good thing is we can like, okay, before I go, we can like, if they will give us a fresh start option, agree on the server rules and then all play together at, at the same rules as you only need one one player we followed first and seven other people can join then that can work we just we just need to have this fresh start option and a server setting lock that will be good if i can lock the server setting that you will know it will be marked like server settings locked and therefore cannot be changed anymore and then everyone will start fresh from level one and therefore you know that this save is on the locked server setting then it will give some sense of progression some meaning into this achievement you know that you did on this server with this particular hard setting and with your friends like you beat the story anyway it was hard it was fun something like that but yeah, we'll see if we can get it at some point and now i'm really i'm really going <laughs> really going now then thank you once more thank you everyone who joined thank you for all the likes from you and from activity in the chat it's always awesome to talk with you and see you in appalachia soon and tomorrow is the live stream as well at the evening don't forget that guys tomorrow we are playing on xbox it's turn for xbox tomorrow evening then see you there and now Tartu is signing out. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.